let's get over into segment number two. Let's do it. And that is our top five. We we kind of do a lot of top fives over the off season, but this is a top five all time Clemson wide receivers. I thought that was kind of fun, mainly because it was a big time wide receiver that that I will tell you is on my list that decided to enter the NFL draft this year. T. Higgins is no longer going to be on the team. He is moving on to the NFL, and we wish him luck. Go Tigers, and we hope you do well in the NFL. We know you'll do well because of how well you did for Clemson and how uh, how much better you left the program than when you started. So thank you so much, T. Higgins, for everything you did. Not only that, Al, but Clemson landed its biggest recruit. You know, we love recruiting news here. <laughs> Clemson landed its biggest recruit, kind of like a repeat of 2009, where Travis yeah. Etienne joined the Tigers again, just like C.J. Spiller did back in 2009. So, Travis mm-hmm. Etienne, welcome back to your to your senior season. We're excited mm-hmm. about it. Two-time, back-to-back ACC Player of the Year, hopefully going to be three-time. I don't think anybody's ever done three-time ACC Player of the Year, but just quietly, we hope they use you a little more in the playoffs, at least in the National <laughs> Championship game. Okay, we've said it. We got it out there. I know fans wanted to get that out there. So in case you're listening, Travis Etienne or Mama Etienne, we appreciate you guys' support, and we are so happy that you're back. I think it's a good move because the running back group right now is kind of diluted, Yep. and next year is going to be a little bit better for him. Chuba Hubbard also decided to stay, So, uh, and Najee Harris from Alabama. So a couple of other guys decided to stay. So the big re- running back class was split. A few people stayed, a few people go, but or, or went, departed to the NFL. But I think it's going to be a better choice for ET, and I think it's going to end up being him and Trevor Lawrence, top two guys getting drafted in the next year's class. That's going to be amazing to be yep. able to see that. But back to the the wide receivers, again, T. Higgins is, is is out, but we wanted to start off with our top five all-time wide receivers. So let us know in the comments section what you think your top five all-time Clemson wide receivers could be in any decade. But I'll tell you, you know, I'm pretty sure Allen and I are, are, are more of the newer age wide receivers. So no, no disrespect to the old school Clemson Tiger fans out there. But I'm going to start us off with my number five. Yep. And I and you know, I do this every time, Al. I don't know, I don't number my stuff. All right, so let me go through here. Let me look at my my numbers. I'm gonna ma- I'm gonna make numbers real quick. All right, all right. I got my number five. I got my five in. Mm-hmm. So my number five is actually somebody who who wasn't a big time recruit, who ended up being really good in the NFL this year for the Raiders, and was in a, probably the best walk on in college football history, and that is Hunter Renfro. Mm-hmm. Obviously, number thirteen, big time number thirteen, national championship winner go-to third down guy and he's just he was just amazing for his his career at Clemson and we're just so thankful for for what he did for the Tigers so I've got Hunter Renfro as my number five who do you got well I know you said we were going to kind of keep this you know to the new age for the most part but I am going to go old school on you for the first one I have my uh, my number five is Perry Tuttle Uh, he was there from 1978 to, to 1981 he had 2,500 total yards over 2,500 total yards and 17 touchdowns like, he didn't have, you know, quite the measurables that some of the guys we have now have. It seems like every receiver we have now is like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, it's insane. Uh, he was closer to the six-foot range, I'm sure. Uh, you know, and he actually played in a time where, obviously, they weren't passing the ball as much. So, those are pretty impressive. Uh, now, he was there for four years. Uh, so, it's a little bit different than some of these guys who are three and done in the NFL. Um, but I think a lot of that needs to be taken into account. And I think he deserves a spot on this list for sure. And you have no idea how hard it was keeping Hunter Renfro off of this list. Okay. That's a that's a really tough thing, and a lot of Tiger fans are going to be really upset about that. But uh, and we've had such good wide receivers, and the stats just aren't quite there uh, for Renfro. He wasn't the big play guy usually. Obviously, he made some big plays. Where you know we've we've seen him play. Um, but Tuttle takes my uh, spot at number five. Wasn't a big play guy. Big game hunter was his nickname. Allen. I mean, that's not exactly what I meant by big play. Long uh, play. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Long play. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he made all kinds of big plays. The fact that you left him off basically ends your contract with the show. I understand. So I, 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 it's been a great run. It's been real. You made it one one episode into season two. Um, but my, you know, my number four is a guy who also won a couple of national cha- or won a national championship with the Clemson Tigers, and he made some miraculous catches for the Tigers in a national championship game in uh, you know against Alabama, 
You talked about him a couple of weeks ago, but Mike Williams, when we talked about those big playoff moments, he was in like, what, four of them? So you got to give Mike Williams some props there. I actually have a picture of him with uh, like 10 people from the crew of Clemson. You got a bunch of big names there, Hopkins, Watson, Hall, uh, Lawson, and uh, Boyd, Spiller, a bunch of guys there representing the Clemson Tigers from, uh, I, I don't know what game that was. It looks like maybe... Maybe Clemson, it looks like national championship. Maybe that was the uh, LSU game. I'm, I think that was the LSU game, but I thought that was a really cool picture from their Twitter account. So that's Mike Williams. Obviously, second most all-time for Clemson with 21 touchdowns for uh, you know for that stat sheet. So I'm liking Mike Williams. He was a big-time guy, and he got hurt that one year where he ran into the goalpost. You remember that? But then came back and dominated for the Tigers. So give me Mike Williams at number four. Yeah, I actually agree with you 100%. I have Mike Williams at number four as well. You know, uh, he was there from 13 to 16, uh, uh, 27, 27 total yards and 21 touchdowns. You know, like you said, he played a huge role in getting Clemson that national championship, you know, back into Death Valley where it belongs. Uh, so that was that was a huge deal. He made a couple of huge plays. I, I will always remember those plays for sure. Um, you know, and we talked about him on our previous top fives as well, like you said. Um, so, you know, he was just a, a real physical guy who could go up, high point the ball, you know, even when you were on him. Uh, you know, you weren't covered or he, you know, you might've been on him, but he can still make the catch. He went over the top of people, you know, he got, he got physical. He, he put his body in the way. Uh, he was just able to make those grabs that a lot of people just can't make anymore. Uh, so I think you have to have him on this list. Like you said, you know, he had all those stats and no, even though he was there for four years, he was out for that, you know, 2015 season. And then number three for me is, I said, the guy that just ended up going, uh, declaring for the NFL, and that is T. Higgins, tied for most touchdowns all time for Clemson Tigers with 27, and uh, led the way for the Tigers this year, was first team all ACC selection this year for the Tigers, uh, ended up being that go-to guy for Trevor Lawrence after Hunter Renfro left. Not typically something that your outside wide receiver, your number one guy would be as your third down go-to guy, but he was that guy. He was so consistent, so consistent and so reliable to the point where when he wasn't on the field, something was up and the Tigers looked completely different and struggled at times. And that's just how important he was. So for me, number three was T. Higgins. I agree with you once again. You know, I gave Higgins the nod over Mike Williams for a couple of reasons. You know, his speed and athleticism are just insane. And I thought, you know, Mike Williams, you know, could get those contested jump balls a little bit better than T. Higgins maybe. Uh, But Higgins was just better at getting open. You know, a lot of his big plays, he just got separation because he was that good. His route running was good. His speed was better. Uh, You know, he logged seven more touchdowns over his career. He averaged three uh, more yards a catch uh, than Williams did as well. Uh, You know, Higgins was that alpha receiver at, uh, at Clemson this past season, and, you know, he's going to need to be replaced if Clemson's going to make another run at it next year. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people in chat on YouTube are saying that that's a big concern for the Tigers. A lot of people said that on my Twitter account when I posted that article about the wide receiver core that they're very concerned to who's going to take his place just because of, you know, how awesome he was and how much of a, a critical role he played in the 2019 season. Number two for me – is a guy who ended up being one of the best wide receivers to ever play in the NFL, and he's got a lot of years left. And he gets to hook up with Deshaun Watson just about every Sunday during the football season, and that is DeAndre Hopkins. He is my number two, second overall in receiving yards at 3,020 yards for the Clemson Tigers. I got a picture of him there from his Twitter account from the Texans game against the Chiefs. We won't talk about that game because it was kind of a heartbreaker for the Texans fans there. But DeAndre Hopkins just lighting it up in the NFL He might not like who my number one is because I know he made some comments about not being seen as the best Clemson receiver. I don't think he was the best Clemson receiver statistically, but I think he was there. there, You can't, uh, you can't state enough how important he was. Obviously the fourth and 16 play was the pivotal moment that most fans look back to and say that connection between him and Taj Boyd was, was so important to continue growing everything. And then, like I said, he was one of those players in 2009, 2008 that helped develop this team and the culture to grow it. And he was a hometown guy, which was even better. Yeah, I have a uh, number two. I have Sammy Watkins, you know, uh, Sammy Watkins was just, man, what a, what a receiver. I mean, when, when Clemson recruited him and was able to snag him, we know, we knew it was going to be, uh, big things for the receiving core. His explosiveness was second to none. I mean, he was kind of the C.J. Spiller at wide receiver. Uh, you know, he just had that burst about him. Everybody remembers the first touchdown pass uh, that he had. It was just absolutely incredible. He blew, blew by the guy. 
and was able to make the play. You know, he just kind of splashed onto the scene. You know, we weren't really used to having a lot of five-star players, and he's kind of one of those that really made his mark early, and it was a lot of fun to watch. So Sammy Watkins had a, a lot going for him. Obviously, he had a big game the other night in the playoffs as well, so that was good to see. I didn't take that into account. I don't take into account NFL careers when I'm making my all-time Clemson list, but uh, he was definitely, definitely one of my top two, and it was a tough decision between these top two players uh, for sure. So uh, it was kind of – it took me a while to figure out, you know, how I wanted to go about it and kind of deliberated on it and seeing who I was, you know, going to make number one between Hopkins and Watkins because I don't really think – there's a whole lot of debate to be had there, uh, but I have Sammy Watkins number two. <laughs> yeah, I know you say, uh, you know, I know you, who you pick now, and I think you know who I picked, which is just basically swapping the top two guys, which is great because mm-hmm. we get to see two perspectives. But for me, he's the career leading receiving yards and three thousand three hundred ninety one receiving yards for the Clemson Tigers. So I really kind of went on the statistics there and leaned on that. Obviously, he was very explosive, a big time five star guy and uh, was able to make some big plays against teams like Georgia to uh, help get Clemson on that national stage and and kind of show other wide receivers how explosive Clemson was in the passing game. Mm-hmm. And couple him with Chad Morris and those guys, I think it would have been, it would have been amazing to see what he could have done with, uh, I believe, Deshaun Watson. I don't think Deshaun ever had a chance with him. It would have been amazing to see him with Deshaun. But um, Sammy Watkins, for me, my number one guy, but I'm telling you, it's 1A, 1B. I can't really say one's better than the other other than just on a piece of paper. So I went with the, uh, Sammy Watkins, and I'm sure, I'm assuming that your number one is? <laughs> it is definitely DeAndre Hopkins, okay? You're 100% right there. Um, you know, Hopkins versus Watkins, okay? That's a really hotly debated topic amongst Clemson fans. I've heard it on the Roar a lot. You know, people like to talk about this all the time. And I think most people actually give the edge to Sammy Watkins simply because of his explosiveness. And that's, you know, there's a valid point. I'm not going to really argue with anybody there. Uh, But I will say, here's why I'm putting Hopkins on top. You know, his hands were simply better. Okay. I never wondered if he was going to make the catch or not. If it was close, it was caught. All right. That's kind of what he did. You know, I think I maybe I'm still a little bit bitter that Sammy Watkins dropped that kind of wide open touchdown right through his hands against the the Gamecocks in one of the years where they beat us. Uh, you know, maybe I kind of hold that grudge against him a little bit. I don't know. Um, but he just he, – Hopkins showed consistent improvement, you know, from year to year. Uh, Sammy's production kind of decreased in that in that year too, uh, partly because he was suspended for two games as well. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of taking all this and kind of, you know, wrapping it in a nutshell and giving it to, to Hopkins as, as the guy. You know, I'm also going to give Watt, or Hopkins a little bit of a benefit of the doubt because in his first year – he was playing with Cal Parker. He was not playing with Taj Boyd, okay? So, look, Cal Parker was a decent quarterback for sure, but he wasn't Taj Boyd. He wasn't the gunslinger Taj Boyd was. Uh, so, anyways, I'm going to give Hopkins kind of taking all that into account. I'm going to put him number one on my list and uh, and call him the best receiver in Clemson history. Well, I'm not going to fight you with it. I think both those guys, really all these guys on here were amazing for the Clemson Tigers. And, you know, it's been a great decade, really. Those were most of the guys from the decade other than Tuttle. But it was, uh, it's been great to watch those guys perform. Dabo Sweeney, really, as a wide receivers coach, Jeff Scott, kind of, growing those guys from within and developing with them into the the head coach that he is now into now Jeff Scott's head coach position those guys have grown into NFL careers you know Dabo Sweeney and Jeff Scott have grown into I'm sure Scott's going to be a great head coach as well so it's really cool to see what's happened over the past decade. But that is our top five all-time Clemson wide receivers. Let us know what you think over in the comments section. Uh, if you agree or disagree with us, wait, we'd like to know. 